And uh, while each one of these people has a very long and distinguished biography, uh, tonight we're just friends. Friends who have worked together and studied together and grown together and learned together in the light of Rabbi Shulweis's spirit. Uh, David Wolpe has been my friend since we were kids in camp. He is uh, a rabbi of some note at Sinai Temple. <laughs> and uh, it is, um, it's always a privilege to learn with him. Uh, also a student of Rabbi Shulweis's, and it's a privilege to have you to learn with us, David. Thanks. I went to rabbinical school three times. First, growing up in my father's congregation. Second, going to the official rabbinical school. And third, I spent years driving around in my car listening to cassette tapes. Those are recording devices <laughs> of Rabbi Schulweis's sermons. I listened to literally hundreds of them every single day when I was a rabbinical student. The problem with that third means of rabbinical school is it made me an unconscious plagiarist because I cannot say how often I quoted him without remembering that that was where I had learned what I was quoting and being so proud of myself for my insights. <laughs> and so I thought since I was going to speak tonight, I ought to actually go back to his writing so that I could quote him as opposed to pretend that it was my thought and I found something that Rabbi Shulweis taught about Hanukkah. And then I want to say something about his life. He mentions that it is a question that the Beit Yosef brings in the uh, commentary to the Shulchan Aruch about why it is that we say Al Hanisim on the first night of Hanukkah because the first night of Hanukkah isn't a miracle. After all, the oil was supposed to last one night. So you've got seven nights of a miracle and one night of what it should be. And Rabbi Shulweis taught that there is one commentator who answers the Beit Yosef's question by saying there are two kinds of miracles. There's yesh me'ayin, there's something from nothing. Creation is a yesh me'ayin, something from nothing. The other seven nights are a light from no oil. But then he says there are human miracles, which is something from something. That's what the first night is. We made a miracle from the oil that was already there. That's what we're here both to celebrate and to mourn. Someone who made miracles from what he found in the world. And in order to understand the miracles that he made, I want to remind you of a teaching that God knows I may have first heard from Rabbi Shulweis, I wouldn't be surprised, about Moses. What made Moses a great leader? The first time we see Moses, he intervenes when an Egyptian is hitting a Jew. That is, between a non-Jew and a Jew. The second time, he intervenes in a fight between two Jews. The third time, it's when the shepherds in Midian are trying to prevent the women from watering their flocks. That is, he intervenes between two non-Jews. Moses doesn't care. If it's two Jews, two non-Jews, a Jew and a non-Jew, his thirst for righteousness is such that he will always speak up. Now, I invite you to think about Rabbi Shulweis. The Chavura movement is about relations between Jews. The Righteous Persons Foundation is between Jews and non-Jews. Jewish World Watch is between non-Jews. Even in the unconscious patterns of his life, he modeled what it is to be a Jewish leader. And you know the rabbis say, Shmuel bedaro ki yiftach bedaro, that every generation, its leaders are the leaders that that generation deserves and needs. So to compare Rabbi Shulweis to Moses is exactly appropriate and right. He was a great rabbi, he was a great man, and we are all impoverished and lucky. Rabbi Shulweis was one of the very few people in the world who truly understood what it was that people of faith shared and what bound them together in a very special fellowship. And because of that very deep inner understanding, he had a very close relationship with leaders of many, many faith communities. It is our privilege this evening to welcome our dear friend, Father Alexei Smith of the Archdiocese, 
Um, it is a privilege always to have Alexi at the synagogue to teach us and learn with us. And this week in particular, which um, for him is Erev Yontif. Uh, <laughs> and any Jewish family understands this. Um, it, is, it is so gracious of you to come and share your time with us. Please welcome Father Smith. Thank you, Rabbi, and uh, thank you for your understanding. I really wish I could have been here this morning with you, but I'm somewhat occupied on Sunday mornings. <laughs> and uh, I haven't learned to bilocate, so I, I just can't be everywhere. Although your husband thought I could be. <laughs> he, he often thought he could be. Um, Rabbi, I very much like the poem with which you began tonight. The last line asks, What is left after death? The life of the survivor. And permit me to share with you a few of the ways in which this survivor's life has been changed because of my relationship with Rabbi Harold Schulweis. I first met uh, oops, Harold um, about 14 years ago. I had recently been appointed the ecumenical and interreligious officer for the Archdiocese. And um, I had my first public event here at your synagogue. You may not know that. Uh, Rabbi Schulweis called. You were having a, a, what we would term an adult education series about, about what your faith believes. And you had a series of different people from different faiths coming and explaining what their faith believes. So he asked me to come. And uh, I remember we met upstairs in the study up here. He said, now you come and you tell us what Catholics believe. <laughs> so I said, well, I can try that. Um, uh, he, like many, thought Catholicism is some type of monolithic belief system, you know. Um, it's, it's that way, but it's not entirely that way. So I, I explained the Catholics believe this and this and this and this. And I actually thought it would be a smaller group, maybe about 20 or 30 people. The synagogue was packed, you know, and we were in the main the sanctuary. And um, then he said, would you be willing to take questions? I said, sure, it's all part of learning. So we took uh, some questions, and then I'll never forget this. And I completely understand where the woman was coming from. I want to preface my remarks by that. Um, she said, so you Catholics believe in forgiveness. Would you then forgive Hitler? Now, again, I know exactly where she was coming from. And I said, according to Catholic belief, we are to forgive others as we expect God to forgive us. And we were, I was trying to explain to her again what th forgiveness was for a Catholic. She, understandably, was not accepting it. And I understood that. I understood where she was coming from. And this went on for a few minutes. And Rabbi Schulweis then left his chair and came up to me, standing in the bima, put his arm around me, and then looked at the woman and said, we asked Father Alexei to come here and tell us what Catholics believe. He's done that. Now let's move on. And I thought, well, that's the mark of a teacher. That's the mark of a real teacher. I've tried to do that in my own life since then. He, ex he was the one that extended an invitation to me uh, to join that, uh, at that time, partnership that the Jewish Musical Commission here, I believe, had with the... Um, Beverly Hills Presbyterian Church. Harold was always, I hope you don't mind my calling him Harold. Uh, Harold was always the, wanting to expand people's views and expand people's horizons, right? So he said, this commission, for those of you who don't know what the commission is, it's a partnership between, uh, it's a, we put on these wonderful seminars on art, theology, and music. And partnership with the musical commission at that time and the Beverly Hills Presbyterian Church wasn't sufficient for Harold. He wanted it expanded. So he called me and said, how about you joining us on this? And we, I did. And it was such a wonderful experience for the last, what, 11 years? We've had these wonderful programs looking at a variety of subjects from an interreligious learning point of view. Creation, forgiveness, Angels, prophets, the Song of Songs, that was his doing over here. Um, and I remember, in fact, the last time, actually, I saw Harold was here. 
when we had that last March, whenever it was. And I always tried to sit next to him at, on the panel because he would always bring this wealth of material with him, <laughs> books and, and articles and everything else, and spread it out in front of him there like a great professor. But you know, he rarely, if ever, opened any of those books. Rarely, if ever, opened any of those books. He simply spoke from the heart. And that was such a wonderful learning experience for me, just to be able to sit next to him and listen to him expound on anything and everything, seemingly effortlessly, seemingly effortlessly. He also introduced me to the um, idea of the Jewish World Watch. Hmm? He, again, always wishing to stretch things. He wanted to expand that definition of Holocaust and genocide. So he called me one day and he said, now you have connections with all these people. How are you and the Armenians? So I said, well, we have a nice rapport with them. He said, well, remember this, Janice? I want you to, uh, can you arrange for me to meet with the Armenian Archbishop? So we, I, we did this, I came here, I picked him up one day. We had this wonderful conversation out as we drove out to Burbank. We talked about anything and everything. And then when we got there, I said, now, Rabbi, I will introduce you to the Archbishop, and then you want to talk to him about this. I will just fade in the background. I'll wait in the antechamber for you. And he said, oh, no, you won't. <laughs> You're staying in here with me. I may need you. He never needed me. I needed him, but he never needed me. And you know that the great friendship then, that blossomed there because of that relationship. Um, I remember talking to him once about preaching because he was the, the consummate uh, preacher in my estimation. I think you told me at the table earlier that he was the, the best pulpit rabbi. And I would agree with that. All due respect to those of you who are present here. <laughs> I can say that, you guys can. Uh, <laughs> we would agree with me, good. So I, I told him, you know, I'd like to do a, a Lenten series, Lent for us, during our Lenten services, on the prophets. But I'd like to approach the prophets not from a Catholic point of view. Catholics always try to read Christ somehow into these prophets. Um, I'd like to explore them from a Jewish point of view. What, what are the prophets telling you as Jews? And I said, but I need some resources. And he immediately provided them. Gave me a couple of books, a couple of articles to read and such. He was absolutely wonderful in that. Absolutely wonderful in that. I remember being invited here for his 80th birthday party. I remember this distinctly because the party was the same day that Pope John Paul II died. And I was hesitant then to come to the party in the evening because our morning period had just begun and it wouldn't be appropriate maybe for me to come. But I thought, well, this is for Harold Schulweis. Certainly John Paul II will understand that. <laughs> So I rationalized, <laughs> and I came. And I remember uh, I had already resolved in my own mind that I was going to extend an invitation to Rabbi Schulweis to be the representative of, of Judaism at the interfaith memorial service that I was putting together at our cathedral for John Paul II. So I said, well, while I'm at the party, I'll just extend the invitation. And my decision to invite Harold to be that, that speaker was certainly um, verified by many of you that day because uh, I had to park across the street, if I recall correctly, and as I was coming across the street and into the synagogue here, many of you, many of the congregants here, came up to me not only to express your sympathy over the death of John Paul II, but you all reminded me that Rabbi Schulweis had that very morning spoken about John Paul II at your Saturday service and about the relationship and the growth of that relationship between Judaism and Catholicism because of John Paul II. So I felt absolutely verified then that I was making the right decision in inviting him 
And he immediately accepted. And he spoke so lovingly and tenderly and lovingly. I want you to know, the family and you, Rabbi, to know that this morning, in my own congregation, several of my own congregants came up to me and expressed their condolences to me on the death of my rabbi friend, Harold Schulweis. And that's indicative, I think, of who Rabbi Schulweis was. People in my congregation never met him, but they certainly knew of him. Certainly knew of him. And in some way, he's touched their lives, maybe through what I learned from him, as you were saying, maybe what we learned from him, we've been able to touch other lives because of that. Because of that. Um, I'm stepping on a little thin ice here because the rabbis are here. <laughs> From my reading of the Talmud, <laughs> which certainly could be questionable, um, I understand that the rabbis of the Talmud viewed death as a moment of transformation. A rabbi by the name of Jacob wrote, This world is like the anteroom before the world to come. Prepare yourself in the anteroom for, before you enter the banquet hall. Well, that certainly would resonate with Catholic teaching. But there's certainly more to Judaism than just preparing yourself for the next life. It's how you live in this life now, right? Now, that's present in Catholicism. But I think we have to learn from you, and we certainly have to learn from Harold how to do that better. Harold certainly taught us all how to live in this life. Not simply by his words, but most especially by his deeds, his actions, even his thinking process. Um, he certainly impacted my life. I hope in some simple way, I was able to help impact his life. Oh, oh thank you. And we would pray in the Catholic sense, we would pray that his memory might be eternal and that we might take his life and in some way, each one of us try to live it as well, thus keeping his memory eternal. Thank you for allowing me to share with you tonight.